How's it going guys? Back another garage sale finds video. Uh, this video is going to be some sports cards I picked up uh, last couple months and of course uh, some watches. Uh, this group here I picked up, it's probably been a couple months now. A uh, guy answered an ad I had, said he had some sports cards that were his and also his father's. His uh, He showed his, his son and his son had no interest in the cards so he just wanted to sell them. Uh, the cards that he had were from the 80s, some 90s. Uh, players like Derek Jeter, Bo Jackson, and then uh, some older stuff that belonged to his dad, all in the same binder. Ended up selling, uh, took all the stuff that was kind of the junk, uh, more newer stuff from the 80s. I uh, stuck that on uh, Facebook, ended up selling that for $50. And then there were some miscellaneous uh, cards from the 60s, uh, just like commons, ended up selling those for another $50. So what I have here, I have $50 into this stuff. I'm sorry, I have $100 into this group right here. So I kept out this, these cards. These are pretty much just commons. Uh, these are from the 1960 or 61 set. Again, mostly these are just commons, uh, but pretty nice condition on these. Uh, I think if I put these on Facebook, I might get $100 for this group. So have those, and then the more Hall of Famer players I haven't sold yet. Um, so these should be paid for after I sell the uh, the '60s over there. Uh, like I said, these should be paid for. Uh, Frank Robinson, Let's see that one has a crease in it. I have another Frank Robinson. Uh, these aren't in the best of shape uh, for the the big hitters in here. So Frank Robinson, uh, this would be a special card. This is a uh, Eddie Matthews rookie card. But you can see the condition is just uh, horrible. I'm not sure if that even would grade a one. It might just like grade authentic. So it has creases all over it. That would definitely be a very high end expensive card if it had a higher grade. Uh, this Eddie Matthews in pretty nice shape. I think that's for 1960. Uh, Richie Ashburn, trying to keep the glare off these. Richie Ashburn, have a Willie Mays. Ernie Banks, another Hall of Famer. Roger Maris, again, condition, a big issue on these. Ken Boyer. Willie Mays in uh, horrible condition. And then another Willie Mays. And then a Mickey Mantle. And this one has a big crease in it. So basically $100 uh, left invested into that group. Uh, make a comment down below if you guys think that's a good deal. $100 for that group after I sold the commons. Uh, ended up getting these just a couple weeks ago. Uh, these were at an estate sale. These weren't marked, and these were actually all wrapped up in rubber bands. I'm uh, shocked they survived and weren't all beat up. But these are in uh, pretty nice condition. Uh, these did not have a, a price, like I said. Uh, he said, make an offer, and I said, how about 60 bucks? So these are all wrapped up in, in uh, rubber bands. I didn't see any of the players in it. So I just said 60 bucks, and he said, sure. I was hoping uh, there might be a, a Pistol Pete Maravich. I know that was his rookie year, 70-71. Uh, that card in this condition would probably be worth between one and $2,000. Unfortunately, there's no Pete Maraviches in them. Uh, the football are pretty much just all commons from 1970. There's no, uh, I think Calvin Hill was the best card. Was like That might be his rookie card. But still did very well on the uh, basketball cards. Like I said, even though they're wrapped up in uh, rubber bands, they're still in remarkable condition. So I think most of these would grade probably like a six or a seven. Still have uh, fairly sharp corners. The edges are nice. Still have great color on them. And it's uh, rare for these cards to survive very well because they're so large. 
they get uh, damaged very easily through the years. End up putting the best ones and uh, I went to the card shop and uh, bought these top loaders. So put them in uh, top loaders and penny sleeves. Uh, all these are like Hall of Famers. Uh, most of these are like Hall of Famers. Uh, Bill Bradley, he was also famous for being a senator. Uh, Jerry West. You see there's lots of doubles and triples in here. Uh, so there's three Jerry Wests. Uh, Nate Thurman. Yeah, I just can't get over the condition on these. It's just amazing. Uh, Connie Hawkins, uh, Wes Unseld. I think an okay NBA player, but he's also famous for being a coach in the NBA. And there's four Wes Unselds. Uh, Oscar Robinson. There's a couple of those. There's actually three Oscar Robinsons. Or Robertson. Oscar Robertson. Uh, Elgin Baylor. I'm not sure why I put him in here. This might be a short print or something. Uh, a lot of the cards in here I put if they were like $20 and higher. So this in this condition must have uh, been pretty decent. Uh, Walt Frazier. The other cards that are hard to find in nice condition from this set are the checklists. And I have three of those. I think just these checklists might bring $30 or $40 a piece. And then uh, Dave DeBusher. And this must have uh, been pretty valuable based on the condition. I think this is JoJo White's uh, rookie card. There's a couple of those. You can see the condition on these. Just amazing on those. And then uh, John Havlicek. Unfortunately, uh, no Pete Maravich is in those. Uh, also, another player is uh, uh, Will Chamberlain. And then Jerry West, a regular card, is in that set. Still very happy with that group for $60. And then uh, these are the watches I just picked up uh, this week. Uh, surprisingly, not with hardly any garage sales and few estate sales, I did pick up a decent amount of watches. And also picked a couple from the thrift store. So I usually don't find these type of watches at thrift stores anymore. I end up picking this up at a thrift store, this uh, old Bulova. Uh, it's missing the uh, <clears throat> stem and crown. I did try to wind it in the back here uh, with the gear up there. Uh, try to manually uh, wind it. Unfortunately, it does not work. Still a very cool case design on this. Has like this step design. So I just took it apart to uh, clean it up. Has also these uh, unique uh, parts that go on the band, on the lug. Attaches like that. Cool design on that. And then I uh, picked up these watches uh, just in the past couple days. Uh, these two LED watches. Uh, somebody's had a couple comments in the past about how do I clean uh, these digital watches, uh, battery operated watches. I just use uh, vinegar and a uh, Q-tip and use that to clean the corrosion. Uh, make sure they're dry after you, uh, you know, clean it with the vinegar. Uh, both of these watches did have corrosion. Uh, fortunately, they were, it was the white powdery type corrosion that uh, kind of just blew off. Uh, when it turns into that blue and green corrosion, it actually uh, corrodes the metal. Sometimes you can get those to work again. Uh, other times you can't. But end up picking these two uh, LED watches up just today at a, uh, a garage sale. There's only two garage sales today, and I found these at one. Uh, and you can see they both do work. So I have a Timex in really near mid condition. Uh, something like that might bring mm, $100 range. And then this no name one. And the display on this one is a lot brighter. So two working LEDs. Uh, these sell all the time. Like I said, fifty to hundred dollar range on those retro looking LED watches from the seventies. 
I think I picked this one up last week at a thrift store. This cool uh, Timex data link from 1996 or 1998. Uh, this model is the most uh, valuable of those data link watches with the rotating bezel on them. Uh, and the, the metal kind compared to the plastic ones. So all the functions do work on it as well as the uh, loom on it. But I can't see it in the light here. I uh, think this was $6.99 or $7.99. Kind of high price for a thrift store. Usually at thrift stores, all the watches were 2 to $3.00. Since, like with everything else at thrift stores, they're raising the prices on those, on everything. Uh, st still, this watch, I've seen them listed on eBay for 200 on up. Uh, realistically, uh, it would probably sell for around $100. Uh, my favorite watch of the group. And picked these watches up yesterday. These were all $3 a piece at two different estate sales. These came from a professional estate sale. Uh, all their watches were three dollars. Have this Seiko Five automatic. See, it has some damage on the crystal. It is running probably from the mid to late seventies. Again, that was three dollars. This uh, Caravelle. Uh, Caravelle is also uh, made by Bulova. That's dated on the back N3, so 1973. You see that watch is running. I told you guys in the past about make sure you watch, look for watch bands. Uh, even if they're junk watches, I always look at the bands. I found Omega bands on just generic watches. And a lot of times, obviously in that case, the band is worth more than the watch. And that's the case we have here. have this uh, Timex automatic. It is running, 1976. But the band itself is worth more. It's for a Bulova. I think it's a Dremer. Or Drema. And I think this this band, this bracelet is from the 60s. And I think this bracelet alone is probably worth around $50. Uh, this is probably a $30 watch. And these uh, Casios came from a private run estate sale. They were moving and selling everything. End up picking up both these watches. These are also $3 a piece. These are really dirty. And uh, clean those up. Put batteries in. And they are both working. So believe it or not, these aren't really uh, that vintage. I'm guessing within the past 15 years. Uh, these still bring pretty decent money for the kind of watch they are. Again, uh, just a quartz dive type watch, uh, made in Japan, but have uh, China parts. Uh, believe it or not, these might bring eighty to one hundred dollars each. And I'll throw a screenshot on there. So have just the regular uh, Submariner style, the black, and then I also have a blue one. Uh, this has a rubber strap, and this has a metal bracelet on it. Both working. I'll put a screenshot, like I said, on those. Uh, like I said, hard to believe, but eighty to one hundred dollars a piece on those. Uh, those are pretty popular watches still. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.